Welcome to ITIL Foundation 2011 Overview. What is ITIL? It's Information Technology Infrastructure Library, and sometimes it's pronounced ITIL because it was developed in England, that's the way they pronounce it. It's a framework of cohesive best practices drawn from public and private sectors internationally for IT service management. It includes publications, certification exams, and qualifications or certifications. Today is not about the certification, it's all about how ITIL can work for you. ITIL is drawn from best practices, in other words, proven activities successfully used by organizations, including standards like Six Sigma or ISO 20000, academic research, customers, substitutes, competition. They all work together to create a, a framework, and ITIL is a framework of best practices, and it's considered knowledge fit for business. Best practices versus proprietary knowledge. A lot of businesses have been in business for a while and they uh, create their own proprietary knowledge, organizational history, if you will. But the problem with that is that it's highly customized, it's hard to document. If something is in your brain or if it's on your C drive, then it's hard to share it with someone else. So that's why frameworks and public standards are important. Uh, this is why distribution uh, is valid across applications. It's free and publicly available. I think of frameworks and public standards as a way to get everyone speaking the same language, even if they don't speak the same language. For example, if you try to talk to business, uh, that's the customer facing people who uh, are part of your business that go out and talk to the customer every day. If they don't understand IT and IT doesn't understand business, then you probably aren't going to be able to be as successful as you need to be. Plus, if you need to create something new, why reinvent the wheel? Why not go to a framework or a public standard and say, what, what did they do? How can we do that just like what they did? So why is ITIL framework successful? Because it's vendor neutral. That means anybody can use it. It's non-prescriptive. That means that you cannot be um, certified as a company, but you also don't have to take any of it that you don't want that doesn't work for your organization. And it's best practice. So uh, it, around the world, uh, they've done a lot of research to find out what are the best practices for the most successful businesses. So all we have to do then is adopt it. There are multiple components in ITIL, and it's important to know uh, that the framework contains processes. In fact, there are 26 processes in ITIL, and processes contain activities, and activities contain functions, and functions contain roles. So let's look at the definition of each. A framework is a set of best practices in wide industry use. The ITIL framework defines how to organize and align IT services with the needs of the business through service cycles. In fact, ITIL framework defines what those service cycles are. There are five service cycles, and we'll go into those in more detail. A process is a structured set of activities designed to accomplish a specific objective. A process takes one or more defined inputs and turns them into defined outputs. For example, the process of managing change is known as change management. That's one of the 26 processes in ITIL. It's important to have a process model because if you're going to teach somebody how to do something, then you want to show them what it looks like. For example, let's say we want to create the best burgers in the world. If you have the process outlined on what it is to do to create that burger, and maybe even have photographed each of those steps, then it would be easy to teach somebody how to do it. In fact, you could probably teach them how to do it within an hour. Well, that's a process model showing how to do it. But you know, you can also use that with an MD, a surgeon, a brain surgeon, showing a new procedure. In fact, they call them procedures, and that's a process. And so it allows them to know exactly how to do it. Now, of course, a brain surgeon is going to have a higher level of education and basic training uh, before we show them the process. So, and IT is somewhere in between, I would say. An activity is a set of actions designed to achieve a particular result, usually defined as part of processes or plans, and are documented in procedures. For example, in the process of change management, holding a daily change control meeting would be an activity. Now what's important is to write down the activity. Certainly you don't need to write down the process for every single activity you do. But if you can see what the process is in an activity, step one, step two, step three, then you can see where the problems lie and you can change that part of the activity. You don't have to throw out the whole thing. You'll know exactly what needs to be changed if something's not working to improve it. 
function. A team or group of people and the tools or other resources they use to carry out one or more processes or activities. Now, this is the first word that I learned in ITIL that didn't make sense to me because I always thought of a function as something you do, but ITIL says it's who does it. In a larger organization, a function may be broken out and performed by several departments, teams, and groups. And in smaller organizations, one person or group can perform multiple functions. And roles is a set of responsibilities, activities, and authorities granted to a person or a team. A role is defined in a process or function. One person can have several roles. For example, there could be a service owner role, it could be a process owner role, and if you're the owner of one process, you might be the owner of two processes if they're closely tied to each other. And then the process manager role, that would be the person who manages the daily day operations of the, of the process. Now let's look at the dimming cycle. Edwards Deming was a, an economist who was hired by the U.S. government after World War II to go into Japan and help rebuild their economy. And he discovered that there are four major components of a, a business, and that is to plan, do, check, and act. Now the interesting thing is he found out that plans are worthless. He actually learned this from General Eisenhower after World War II. Eisenhower was the person responsible for the largest plan of all time. And that also happened to be the largest military operation of all time and uh, was considered a success. Now he didn't know that for 24 hours if it was a success or not, but he was very vocal in saying that plans are worthless, but planning is essential. That largest military operation of all time was known as D-Day and it was a huge undertaking but he said that because it was not successful on the date that it was planned for, that was June 5th, 1944, because of the weather and it could have all been thrown out, it could have all not worked at all except that it wasn't the plan that was important, it was the concept of planning and it actually took place on June 6th and it was very successful. So in other words, the paper plan is worthless. It's the concept of planning, the time that it takes to think about it and process that is essential. Then you do it. You implement the plan, whatever it is that you've devised. Then you go back and you check it, you audit it to see did it work, didn't it work? And you improve, you act, you look and see what can I do to make it better. And notice this is like pushing a big wheel uphill. Why is it uphill? Because of cultural pushback. This is change and people don't like change. So that's why you can only count on an incremental improvement, small changes over time. However, if you don't put some kind of a wedge in there, uh, it's very easy for that wheel to start rolling back downhill again. And that wedge would be the process of writing the steps down, the activities, so that you can see, oh yeah, yeah, we're doing it differently now, we're doing it this way. And that is what keeps you from rolling all the way back down. Now in ITIL, it takes these four stages of uh, Deming and puts over it the five life cycle stages. So you can see stage one, service strategy, and stage two, service design, are both in the planning stage. Service transition and service operation are both in the doing stage. And fully half of the, the plan here, the project, is continual service improvement. That's the check and the act. And so those are the five life cycle stages of IT service management.